recovery is as important as productivity. Today we're often being told to stay the course and keep grinding in our journey to success. The problem is that while you might work for 20 hours a day, this doesn't equal greater productivity. Therefore, in this video I want to discuss 4 simple principles that will help you achieve greater success in efficiently and effectively utilising your time to be more productive when working, and equally to help you save hours of effort each week whilst increasing output in the time that you are working. I've utilised these very principles myself in numerous aspects of my life, because if I didn't, I'd simply wear myself out. I run numerous social media accounts, not least of which is creating YouTube content where I create, edit and market all of the videos myself. This in itself would be enough to qualify as a full time job for many. However, beyond this I still have a full time job and I have a family to care for, never mind the time I spend on myself to have fun or learn. Simply put, if I'm not smart with my time, then I wouldn't be able to function. And this is where we get into the first tip. Because if you want a strong day ahead, then you need to set your state. One of the biggest problems most of us have when we start our day is we do something to kill our state for a productive day ahead. These days, the biggest factor in this is usually our phone, which many people have got into the habit of checking first thing after they wake up. Here's the thing though, research has shown that after sleep your prefrontal cortex is at its most active and creative, helping with problem solving. Therefore, any time you spend with the distraction box that is your phone is going to impact the creative flow state that you've started the day with. Instead, I utilise my first moments in the morning to focus my thoughts on what it is I need to do, reviewing my schedule for the day ahead and I do this while walking around, which in a study was found to help stimulate increased creativity in people by up to 60%. I don't spend too long on this either. It'll be something in the region of 10 minutes just to set my state to be optimistic, productive and ultimately successful. Once this has passed, I ensure I'm ready to work with focus. As we've established already, we're at our most creative after sleep, and therefore it naturally makes sense that we do some of our most focused work for the day soon after as well. So your immediate aim at this point of the morning should naturally be dedicated to doing something of vital importance to you as you'll be at your peak state to work and if you went through the process of setting your state, you'll already have some clarity on how you're going to get it done. This is essentially eating the frog as Brian Tracy puts it. Personally, I like to get a task done at this point of the morning before I do anything else, including eating breakfast. It's my focused alone time where I know I can get some key tasks done without any distractions, effectively applying the ideas of Cal Newport's deep work. Usually to help me, I apply a HIT style workout process to help me complete my task too, where I break down my work into intense periods of focus and take short breaks in between each period of work to help my recovery. Doing this helps me maintain a level of focus rather than seeing it drop after a prolonged period of work. The whole idea in being focused is to get into a flow state when working whereby I feel my work is being completed naturally without the need to push myself too hard and equally the creative process is coming to me without effort. The whole point is I'm utilising my body mechanics to increase efficiency during this time. The question at this point comes down to understanding what you should be using this time for. Well, that's where we apply the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule is quite simple, it's the idea that 80% of results come from 20% of the work that you do. So the key understanding here is to identify and understand what 20% of activities you do yield the greatest returns. Once you've identified which tasks will give you the highest return, usually a process of learning through experience, this will be what you want to focus on in the initial period of work that you set for your day after waking up. For me this can vary based on my priorities, but if we take social media as the example, it's usually when I'll spend time creating content which is the biggest driving force to actually reaching people and hopefully benefiting them. And on that note, if you're enjoying the video so far, please drop a like down below to help support the channel and push this video out to more people. So with that said, let's go on to the last principle to maximise productivity, which is recovery. If it isn't obvious already, recovery is the key to high productivity and is important for creativity, which we've identified as being increased after sleep. Similar to how athletes put as much emphasis on physical recovery after workouts to maximise performance, 
The same is true of our brain and utilising sleep effectively. You've probably experienced the feeling of tiredness and lack of focus after a poor night's sleep, and this normally impacts your performance the next day. For obvious reasons, we need to try and avoid this by ensuring we allow ourselves adequate and high quality recovery time by getting the best quality of sleep, for a reasonable number of hours. As mentioned before, athletes have found recovery is just as important as work in maintaining peak physical condition, especially when they regularly have to compete. While mental fatigue is also highly draining, it can also impact us physically meaning its effects can arguably take a greater toll than just physical tiredness. So if you want to manage productivity, you need to make sure that you set your state, focus on key tasks after sleep, apply the 80-20 rule and place a great emphasis on your recovery.